Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Father Chris Aylar here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. It's wonderful to have you with us. I'm surprised we have a nice crowd here today because the weather is so crummy, but I told everybody that the grace that will be given for the efforts to come for this first Saturday, the talk first and then the devotions. Today we have an incredibly powerful apparition approved, fully approved of Mary that we really don't hear about. And it's the link of Fatima and Lourdes. We've all heard of Fatima, we've all heard of Lourdes, but has anybody heard or do many people know about Borang? And that's from Belgium, which we'll be talking about today. So please stay with us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you, send the Holy Spirit down upon us. Wrap us in the mantle of your mother. Mother Mary, please guide us always to your son. And through your message at Borang, may you give us constantly that grace through you from our God to be able to constantly live the life of Christ. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless everybody. We're so glad you could be with us. And, you know, this, this apparition here, um, I, as I just mentioned a second ago, everybody's heard, most everybody, of Lourdes. That was 1858. Or Fatima um, in 1917. The fact, though, is there's a third part of that chain. Um, there is a definite link between Lourdes, Fatima, and a third part that we never hear about, or at least some may. But that third link to the chain is called Borang, and it's from Belgium. And it happened, guess what, after Fatima. And so <clears throat> this, these three are connected, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's look at our first slide. Now, this story, that's how you see it on the screen, Our Lady of Borang um, was in Belgium, and it should be more widely known, uh, but it's not. The words which Our Lady spoke at Borang are meant for the whole world, not just the five children. By the way, you see a pattern of Mary? Who does she appear to? Humble like the little children, right? Same with Lourdes, same with Fatima. And here at Borang, she appeared to five, four girls and a boy. All right, so <clears throat> let's take a look at the next slide. Brother Mark can show us. Borang is a tiny town, 2,000 people in the French-speaking part of Belgium. It's only five miles from the French border. And the area had been staunch Catholic. But by 1932, so this is right in between the world wars. Again, Mary's warning. After Fatima, completing the link between Lords and Fatima, and they started drifting away. Some were indifferent, just indifferent towards the Catholic faith. Others were outright hostile, which kind of like we're seeing today. The, the basis of this problem was the same as kind of like Fatima was the government, the socialists. All right, the socialists were definitely against the church and they were becoming more and more in power. And so Mary came to warn us. And now everybody always says, don't get political. Well, Mary got political. She warned of the evils of communism and socialism. So Our Lady basically is pleading with us to save, help her, to help her intercede uh, and, and to save the world from the terrible results of its own sins. Remember, prophecy is not set in stone, Pope Benedict told us, but with intercessional prayer, with penance, with uh, reparation. That's why we're here for this first Saturday. We're actually, after this talk, going to do the first Saturday devotions, which is exactly the remedy that Mary gave, not only at Lourdes, not only at Fatima, prayer and penance, but now at Borang in Belgium in 1932, we're going to fulfill not only the first Saturday request of Fatima, but her request at Borang in Belgium a few years later. 
This all ties together. And the tie together with Lord's Fatima and Boring is amazing. So now, the very least, if Mary is going to do this for us, if she's going to bring the message from heaven, the very least we could do is listen to it, right? Um, and then act upon it. It's, it's one thing to just listen to it. That's the first step. But we got to act upon it. Our Lady made a promise. She made a promise to convert sinners through these five children. Just like God uses through Mary to bring grace to the world, Mary said through these five children, we will help convert sinners, a small little town of Belgium. So let's take a look at these children. Let's look at your next slide. These children were four girls, a single boy. They ranged from nine to 15, and they were from two different families. Does that not sound familiar? That's exactly what we had in Fatima, right? Cousins. And so here, three of the children were the family of a rail, railroad clerk and his wife, and two girls were a farmer's, the children of a farmer's widow. I mean, the connection here is amazing. We can see who Mary appears to. And so you can see the children there on your screen. So on the evening of November 29th, 1932, four of the children walked to the school, the convent. There was a, a convent school there of sisters run by the Sisters of Christian Doctrine. I didn't know much about that order. I've been reading about them. And boy, do we need that today. The Sisters of Christian Doctrine. <laughs> and so they went to meet up with one of the other girls to walk home. So there were five of them. Now, when they reached the school, let's take a look at our next slide. When they reached the school, Albert, the boy, pointed up to a lady dressed in a long white robe. This is hilarious. The only time Mary's ever appeared on a railroad uh, viaduct. And you can see it on the picture there. She was walking over the railroad viaduct. I mean, I never heard that before. And Albert pointed up to her and, um, and, and just as they passed the school. All right, so now let's look at our next slide again. Here's a closer picture of what they saw. She looked to be about 18 to 20 years old, they said. So the children said this lady is about 18 to 20 years old with deep blue eyes and a rosary hung from her arm. Now, what's the message of Fatima, the rosary, right? And so she was near, guess what? She was near a place on that convent ground called the Lord's Grotto. The Lord's Grotto. And I'll add to that, if you come here to the National Shrine, a lot of times people ask, Father, you know, what's there to see on the hill, the different places, the Stations of the Cross, the Holy Family Shrine, the Shrine of the Holy Innocents, the Outdoor Shrine. Every time somebody says, at least to me personally, brothers might agree or disagree, but at least me personally that they incurred a miracle or a healing, I always ask them. And they say, Father, when I was at the shrine, I, I made this prayer. And I always ask, if you don't mind my asking, where? And they always say the Lord's Grotto. We have a Lord's Grotto here. And when I was a novice and I would come here, I would go down to the Lord's Grotto and there's a beautiful replica of Lord's Grotto. And then the, the, the roof, the top of the cave, there was a little bird's nest and there was a little blue bird. And she would come back every spring so I came as a postulant, I came as a novice, I came as my first spouse, and then she disappeared. I haven't seen her in years, and obviously she's in the big sky <laughs> up above, but, but she would, every time I would go down there and pray, she would fly out of the nest up onto Mary's shoulder, and she would sit on Mary's shoulder and she would sing. The whole time I was there, as soon as I would get up and start walking away, she'd fly back to the nest. And, and that, that's our large grotto. And I, I think this connection here is amazing because right here at, at Borang, it was at the Lord's grotto 
that she appeared. She was dressed entirely in white and there were golden rays like a diadem around her head. All right, she appeared to be standing on a cloud. Does that also sound familiar? All right, when Albert asked, and this is what's interesting, because remember Bernadette at Lourdes asked, who are you? And she says, I am the Immaculate Conception. That was the beginning. So we had Lourdes and then Fatima. And now Albert asks her, he doesn't ask, who are you? He asks, are you the Immaculate Virgin? And so this ties it together. And she smiled and nodded her head. I can't even imagine. And he said, and, and he said what do you want? This was to Mary. And her answer is why many theologians didn't think it was genuine at first. They didn't think Mary would be this simplistic. When he asked, what do you want of this Immaculate Virgin? She said three words, always be good. And all the other messages, this is like sums it all up. Always be good. And so the other children saw her as well. Her feet were not visible. Another interesting thing compared to other Marian apparitions. So she extended her arms slowly and then she disappeared. Now that was not the only vision though. Over the next several weeks, they saw Our Lady 32 more times near this garden at the convent. And the final apparition was on January the 3rd, 1933. So it only lasted a couple months from November 29th, 32 to January 3rd, 1933. So again, just over a month. So initially the children's parents, does this sound familiar as well? Just like Fatima, the, mirror, uh, the parents and the uh, mother superior of the convent, the mother Theophile, they did not believe them. Again, standard stuff, right? So their families were devout, but the town had grown lukewarm, even hostile. And so Mother uh, Theophile, she ordered the gates of the garden to be locked. And she added two fierce watchdogs, like two junkyard dogs. And so people were trying to come, but there was these mean dogs. And that Saturday, in obedience, obedience to the superior, just like the children at Fatima, in obedience, the children didn't go to the garden because Mother Superior told them not to. How different from today. Now we don't have that respect for authority. She wasn't even their parents. But the Mother Superior said, don't go to the garden. And they, they obeyed. So they were, they were sad because they would not see Our Lady that day. Sounds just like Fatima. And then at dusk, when Mother Theophile went out, now let's look at our next slide. This is the actual photograph the actual photograph I was able to find in the archives of, of this um, apparition. She went out at dusk, Mother Superior, to lock the garden gate, and there were 150 people standing in the street. And so uh, she said to them real aggressively, you're wasting your time. There's nothing to see here. Right? But that's sometimes when we're needed. I remember... Um, I was driving home back to Michigan and it was about two o'clock in the morning. My eyes were getting heavy and I'm trying to stay awake on the road. And I'm on down a rural Michigan road about 20 miles outside my parents' house and there were police lights everywhere, ambulances everywhere. And I pulled off to the side and I saw bodies laying in the street and they were covered with the tarp. And then, and then I saw them ministering to some others. So I knew there were, there were some live and some dead. So I immediately grabbed my anointing kit with the holy oils because you don't know who's Catholic, who's not. You, you do a conditional anointing. And I raced up to the scene. My, have times have changed. Years ago, you would have been welcomed as a priest. Instead, three of the guys jumped in front of me, screaming at me, get out of here. There's nothing to see here. I said, I'm not a tourist. I'm a priest or I'm not a gawker. I'm a priest. And I'd like to be able to anoint. And the language that they used at me, it just made me realize there's no 
not much understanding anymore of the need of the sacraments. That would have been 50 years ago. They would have, they would have probably called me to come to the scene or a priest. Instead, they're swearing at me to get out of there. Unbelievable. But I believe the grace of God still gave them those graces just because there was an attempt by the priest to do the anointing. So anyway, she said, get out of here. There's nothing to see here. This is the mother superior telling the people. Then all of a sudden she got a, sw a swarm of grace. She relented and said she changed her mind. But because the children had obeyed her, she allowed them to return to the garden. And so later she became um, more open to this idea. And sure enough, Our Lady then became visible again. And the children went into the garden and began to recite the rosary. So now let's look at a picture of the garden. So look on your next slide is a picture of this garden. They had formed the habit of saying the rosary as soon as they would arrive in the garden. It was the first thing they did. They didn't expect to talk to Mary. They didn't demand that she appear to them. The first thing that they did before anything else was pray the rosary. And so each time then Our Lady appeared, the children felt themselves drawn to the kneeling position as if they were thrown onto their knees. Now, if we should do that, and remember, genuflection and bowing and kneeling is not worship. We do it before a king or a queen. We don't worship a king or a queen. It's a sign of honor. And so if we do that, and should do it to Mary, how much more should we do it in Holy Communion to our Lord? Right? The true King. And so uh, the message, let's go back to what the message was of what Mary said. The Blessed Mother urged that the people pray much, build a chapel there on the spot, again, sound familiar, and pilgrims to come. That's why we at the shrine here always want to welcome pilgrims. Now, up to 20,000 people started coming. Now, during the last apparition on January 3rd, 1933, Our Lady said, I will convert sinners. I am the mother of God, the queen of heaven. Now, this is extremely important. She said that. I'm going to explain this in a minute. Now, what makes this apparition an imperative third piece of the Lord's Fatima? Because in those others, Mary gave us warnings, warnings. In this one, Mary's not chastising. Mary is embracing, consoling, and you need that part. The other ones are warnings. Akita is a warning. Fatima is a warning. But now Mary in this apparition isn't sternly chastising. And warning and warning, she's embracing, she's consoling. We need that. And so this is important today for those who run away from the church because they found the church is too tough. This is the apparition for you. All right, so let's go to our next slide. She revealed her golden heart. Her heart made out of gold. And you can see on that slide the picture of her golden heart. This is why she's also called in this apparition, Our Lady of the Golden Heart. What a beautiful title that we never pray in any litanies. We never pray in any intercessory prayer. Our Lady of the Golden Heart. That sums it all up. And so... Um, she received or revealed herself as Our Lady of the Golden Heart and asked one of the children to sacrifice. Again, sounds like Fatima. And this was the immaculate heart of the mother of God. That golden heart, Our Lady of the Golden Heart, that golden heart is, our, is basically the immaculate heart of the mother of God. Now, this is all going to tie together in a minute, so stay with us. So this heart was displayed in all the remaining apparitions in Borang. She would reveal this golden heart. Now, during one of the visions, guess what happened? The word started getting out just like Fatima. And here comes separate physicians, separate doctors, and they examined all five of the kids. And during the visions, they re realized all five of the kids were in ecstasy. They pro poked them. They prodded them. They even took a lighted match. 
all right, which was even held under Gaberte's hand, and she never responded. You ever take, I'm sure when you were a kid, you put your hand over a candle or you took a match or something, you, hit, you can't keep your hand over it. It's impossible. The, the pain, the burn, it, 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 you, you can't stop your natural reaction. And they held the match, and what they noticed was it wasn't burning the skin. And they would hold the match there, and as soon as she would flinch, they would stop it, or as soon as they would see it was burning the skin, they would stop it. But they never stopped, it never burnt the skin. It never did. And so she never responded. So there was no burn mark on her hand, and she had no knowledge of what had been done to her when she came out of ecstasy. So the apparitions were greatly scrutinized. They were finally approved on January the 2nd, 1949. Now, also approved were the miraculous nature of two cures obtained through the intercession of Our Lady of Borang. And so she had the needed approvals from the church. So the feast day of Our Lady of Borang was placed on the liturgical calendar. Here's what's fascinating on August the 22nd. Now, what do we know August the 22nd as now? The queenship of Mary. What did Mary reveal herself as at Borang? The queen of heaven. Now, what happened? Why was this date changed? We're gonna to get to there. Now, August 22nd, as I said, is the feast day of the queenship of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's not just the queenship of Mary. It's actually the queenship of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now all of a sudden, we're going to start to see the tie between Lourdes and the Immaculate Conception. Fatima, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. And Borang. This is incredible. I never knew this connection. Now let's look at our next slide. Here's the last living visionary. This is Gilberte. Um, she died at the age of 91 in February of 2015. There's a picture of her. She was the last living one. And so the vision, let's talk a little bit more now about that again. Let's go, let's go back to that. So let's go to our next slide. Here's a vision. Now, Our Lady, they said, as we told you, looked young, like 18 to 20. And they said her smile lighted up all her features. Her eyes were a beautiful deep blue, as we said. She wore a long, white, heavily pleated, unbelted dress. And the children said that these rays of blue draped the dress obliquely from the left shoulder to the hem. And a rosary hung from her arm and her hands had been joined as if in prayer. So you can see that. There's the children. And there's Our Lady of the Golden Heart. All right, so Our Lady asked the children to come and pray in the evenings after the day's work, again like Fatima. So now great crowds started coming. And they would mingle with the children. And they would witness them going into ec uh, ecstasy, even if they couldn't see it. So the crowds were growing now. And people came even from distant parts of the country. So a lot of times on several different occasions, Our Lady told the children that she wished them to be present on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Now, because the day had been specifically mentioned, what's the feast day? December the 8th. The crowd was bigger than usual. There were about 15,000 people. This was on December the 8th. So the children arrived, now this is 1932, so the children arrived about 10 minutes past six and they were escorted by their parents and a bunch of doctors and psychologists. And the children again beheld the vision as soon as they reached the gate. Now the garden was illuminated. It was real bright, but the vision that they had of Mary was much more radiant. So each child during the vision was examined by a whole slew of different doctors. And they, again, were all found to be in ecstasy. Again, they pinched them. They slapped them. They, they pricked at them, all five children. They shined flashlights into their eyes. They would not move. There was no reaction. 
They burned them with matches, no reaction, no effect on the skin. All this time, the huge crowd was praying the rosary. Amazing. And soon as they completed the last decade, Our Lady disappeared. Now, powerful. So a great crowd was on hand again at the last appearance on January 3rd, now 1933. So four of the children gave a joyous shout as the apparition began. But this sounds just like Fatima. Fernande sobbed because she could not see the vision. So one of the visionaries was not able to see it. Again, just like the others. And so Andre, uh, uh, Andre, it's not Andre, it's like Andre, she said to her, uh, mother, Mary did, to, to Andre, I am the mother of God, the queen of heaven. Pray always goodbye. Then she went to Gilberte, the other girl, and Our Lady made a great promise. I will convert sinners. Goodbye. <laughs> then she went to Albert, the boy, and the other Galberte. There's two Galbertes. And she simply said to them, goodbye. I would have been like, how come I didn't get a bigger message? <laughs> but when the first vision, when the vision was totally over, Fernande, who was in grief because could not see Our Lady, began to kneel. And suddenly she heard a crashing noise and she saw a great ball of fire on the tree. Then she saw, what she saw was um, Mary and Mary showed her her golden heart, but a special view of it like the others didn't get to see. So here she was disappointed because Mary, why doesn't Mary talk to me? Why doesn't God talk to me? And there was something greater in store than she saw. And so then she said to this one, Goodbye, just like the other. So Fernande, she wept because she was sure that she would never see Our Lady again. Now afterwards, the three youngest children said that Our Lady had told each of them, guess what? A secret, just like Fatima, which they, might, they may not tell anyone, not even each other. This is fascinating and it ties again, we're gonna say, explain in a minute to Fatima, but let's watch a one minute video I'm going to have Brother Mark show you a one-minute video right now that does a great job in 60 seconds explaining to you Borang. Let's, let's take a watch. Okay, so that's a good, but sh short, but very good explanation of the message of a uh, Borang. And so now let's talk about the reactions. Let's have Brother Mark show the next slide. Here's an original photograph. The story of these apparitions began to spread all over Europe. And some authorities said that they were frauds, again, like Fatima. Others said they were victims of hallucinations. So 1934, 1935, another, a number of books and magazine articles were written to expose them. This was based off the socialistic governments of the time. But people kept coming. Now, gradually, doubt and skepticism disappeared. People hung to it. The story began to be known, and the facts, once they got out, were solid. So the children remained in Borang and led lives as close to normal as was possible. All right, let's take a look at our next slide. They would visit that hawthorn tree. Mary appeared 
like at Fatima on a tree. She appeared on the hawthorn tree and the children would visit there each day to say the rosary. Even after the apparition stopped, often they were besieged by pilgrims and people curious trying to find and talk to them. And some came to scoff them, but they, they, they were patient. And after the bishop set up an Episcopal commission to investigate, the children underwent long and severe examinations. They once had to appear before a tribunal of 90 doctors. <laughs> And so in the course of the investigation, the children never changed their story. They never changed. And they never contradicted each other when they were interviewed separately. Amazing. Now, there were two million pilgrims the first year. Two million pilgrims. On a single Sunday, they had 25,000 people get Holy Communion. Unbelievable. This is what we need to turn back to. There were tons of cures, miracles, conversions. Many cures were reported by pilgrims. And more important to that than the physical cures were the spiritual cures and conversions. Remember, Mary promised, I will convert sinners. She never made that promise anywhere else. What did Jesus tell St. Faustina was the most important thing we could do at three o'clock in the day? It's, it's all tied together, but it was not the chaplet. At three o'clock, he said, pray for the conversion of sinners. This was the most important position of uh, prayer. And that's why Father Sirvan talked about the old blood and water prayer. Old blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, a font of mercy for us. I trust you, that's called the conversion, the prayer for the conversion of sinners. And so Jesus said this was the most important. So all seemed to be... Um, all of this was at the hawthorn tree. The hawthorn tree was surrounded then by this time with bronze railings and it served as kind of like a gigantic votive candle stand, which you see in your picture there. And beneath the tree is the statue of Our Lady of Borang, the Virgin with a Golden Heart. Now, today, let's look at it. Brother Mark, go to the next slide. There's an open air altar on the spot where the Lord's grotto used to be. And so um, we are getting reports. I've read reports of the healings at where that Lord's grotto was. And it made sense to me why we have all the reported miracles here at the shrine at the Lord's grotto. And it made sense to me because at Lord's, what was the message of Lord's? One of healing. So the three tie together because first Mary, through her intercession, heaven has to heal us. The message of Lord's was healing. Then when we're on the right track, the message of Fatima was warning. You must pray, do penance, stop offending our Lord. Warning. But then in Bahrain, she wraps her mantle around us and consoles us. I am with you. And I will lead you to my son. So it's a healing at Lourdes. It's a warning at Fatima. And then that trifecta is completed at Borang by her wrapping her mantle, showing her golden heart. Why the golden heart? Because the golden heart is based on love and Mary consoles us through our passion. Every time you pray the stations of the cross, what do you think of when you get to the 13th station? When you get to the 13th station, you shouldn't be looking at your watch saying, this is done yet. When you get to the 13th station, you should be able, because it's when Jesus is removed to the cross into the arms of his mother. And you should say, Mary, at the time of my death, please receive me into your arms as you did Jesus. And then she takes us to him. It's not to Jesus or to Mary instead of Jesus. It's to Jesus through Mary. And that is Mary in consecration. So what happened to the five children at Borang? Okay, all five, they married and lived quietly with their families. Um, the five children, Our Lady wish to give them, and this is what's the message of this. This is how it all ties together for me. What is the attack of Satan right now? What did... What did if the, the church and the family. 
And guess what the message of Bo Rang is? Father, okay, you've told me all this happened, all this happened, but what's the message? The message is that, that, that we believe that the five children, Our Lady wished to give them as examples and models of the family life because they lived beautiful lives and had children. That she wishes us to emphasize the role of the family, the lay people, and carrying out her message. I'm telling you right now, that is the most thing next to the church that is under attack in our world. And we're praying for the church every day in in, 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 uh, our intentions, but are we praying for the family? And if you're going to pray for the family, what's the greatest message of the family? The five children that Mary gave us that grew into be beautiful parents, many children, at Bo Rang. I really feel if all of us watching this video, and our videos are getting hundreds of thousands of views, I really feel if those who are watching this, if every one of us used Our Lady of Bowring to intercede for the families, we'd start to see differences. Instead of redefining marriage, instead of promoting abortion, Last night, Father Anthony led us in the first Friday, the reparation to the sacred heart of Jesus. Please pray for this craziness. Now the satanic temple, I think is in New Mexico, I I can't remember, is now legally performing abortions to a satanic ritual. Using a satanic rite, like we have a rite in the mass This is the Latin rite, R-I-T-E. We have a rite. We follow the rite to worship God properly. The satanic temple has issued a satanic rite, R-I-T-E, to follow in the worship of Satan. And part of that rite, their claim, is the religious freedom to conduct an abortion. And they're being allowed to do this. The destruction of our family, the family is the bedrock of society. Even the church doesn't survive without the family. So even the attacks of Satan on family and the church, I believe the family even is attacked more than the church. Because without the family, you don't have a church. What's the name of the church? The domestic, or the family, the domestic church. And so now that this satanic temple has issued an actual right to perform an abortion and they're carrying out abortions through an actual ritual, offering it up to Satan. This is beyond mind-boggling. What are we doing to fight it? What are we doing? Pray to Our Lady of Borang. She's the one. The whole message here is based on the family. Even Lord's healing, Fatima, warning, was not about the family. We needed this trifecta. We needed the completion. We needed this third part, just like a a, a trinity. And here, Mary doesn't warn us. She converts us. And then she uses the five children to become exemplary examples of a family. Amazing. All five brought up their children to have devotion to Our Lady. The most important thing at all. The most important thing you can give your children is not an education, even though that's needed. It's not money and belongings, even though those are needed. It's not a, um, clothes and food, even that is obviously needed. The thing that we must give our children is faith. And all five shun the limelight. They are not important, they said. We are not important. They were merely the instruments through which God, which Our Lady used, uh, or God used Our Lady to give this message to the world. Now, what did Our Lady, why did she then appear at Borang? The broad answer to that question, simple. She appeared at Borang for the same reason that she appeared at Lourdes and Fatima, to save souls. Overall, that's the one and only reason for a Marian apparition. Now, she doesn't save the souls. She brings them to Christ to save souls. So she wishes to help us save our own souls and to enlist our help in saving the souls of others. This has been the teaching of Christianity from the beginning. We can intercede. Saints, mystics, theologians all agree on this. The shortest, fastest, surest way to God 
is through Mary because she's the perfect example. She's a perfect disciple. That's why we call her, the, her unique position that she has, mother of God, mother of the church, queen of heaven, mediatrix of graces. Doesn't mean she's equal to, co-mediatrix. Doesn't mean she's equal. She works with God. Co in Latin means cum, means with. So the important part that Mary plays in our salvation is not understood. It's rejected. Many Catholics reject it. And so many Catholics look upon devotion to Our Lady as something that is just added. It's, it, you know, it's a nice thing to have. No, the truth is we depend on Mary in a big way. Here, here's what's critically important. Remember I told you the message of this, this apparition is the family? Well, here's the thing. In a family, we need a mother. Now, the truth is we depend on Mary for our supernatural life, being our supernatural mother, just as a child depends on his earthly mother for his natural life. You get that? So God gave every child, and remember, you are not the owner of your child. You are not the owner. You are a steward. And every child on this earth was given a mother for the, for the natural life. I mean, even if you lost your mother or you never knew your mother, you needed your mother to, to have life. You, you, you couldn't without the natural mother. So God gave us a natural mother on earth. Doesn't it make sense he give us a supernatural mother in heaven? And the supernatural mother in heaven is Mary. So at Bo Rang, Mary reminds us of this. And the need for the family, the great power that she has to intercede before God, her great love for us, and our dependence on her. Let's look at our next slide. She wears a diadem, which is a symbol of her power. All right, she shows her golden heart as the symbol of her motherly love. And she says, I am the immaculate virgin, tying to Lord's. I am the immaculate conception, tying to Fatima, my immaculate heart will triumph. And then, but she goes on to add, I am mother. This is the connection of the family. And then she goes on to say, I'm the queen of heaven. This is fascinating because what a tremendous meaning is packed in this, in these few words. How important. Lords, Fatima, and Borang, they are connected like three links of a chain. Let's look at our next slide. At each place, Our Lady asked for a chapel. At Borang, she specifically asked for pilgrims. That's what you see on your screen. Look at those pilgrims at Borang. These shrines are visited by millions of pilgrims every year. And the number of spiritual cures at these three shrines... Lord's Fatima and, and Borang cannot be estimated. The amount of religious fervor that is generated cannot be computed. The shrines are having a profound effect on the world for those who will listen. So this Bishop Theus of Lourdes, listen to this. This is the bishop at Lourdes says that the apparition at Lourdes and those at Borang should stand together. He points out that purity was emphasized at Lourdes and that the heart of gold was emphasized at Borang, symbolizing love. And he said, guess what Mary's entire life was? Purity and love. Lourdes, Borang. That is what explains the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is also true that the apparitions at Fatima and Borang should be taken together. Why? Because the similarities between the two of appearances are striking. Listen to this. The message of Borang is actually a repetition of Fatima, but also in some ways adds to the message of Fatima. They are the same request that Mary had many times in the last century, prayer, sacrifice, and devotion to the Immaculate Heart. Through these practices, we can help save our own souls and help Mary 
to bring souls to Jesus. But Borang completes Lords and Fatima because then she brings us together as one family. She is our mother. She is our queen. In fact, the queen mother. That's what the Old Testament describes the mother of the king in the line of David, the queen mother. Borang brings them together and we don't know about it. The rosary is a powerful form of prayer. And I'm almost finished. Sorry, I'm running late here. And one that Our Lady loves. She emphasized this devotion at Lourdes. Did you know this? Mary emphasized the rosary at Lourdes. Many don't know this. By allowing the rosary to slip through her fingers while Bernadette was praying it. And of course, at Fatima, she said, pray the rosary every day. I am the lady of the rosary. Now at Borang, Our Lady comes with a rosary on her arm. She usually appeared while the children were saying the rosary. So it's evident that she wishes to stress the rosary in all three. There's also the theme of sacrifice. Under sacrifice are included prayers, penance, and reparation. What was the message of Fatima? Pray, repent. We make sacrifices and offer to offer penance for our own sins and reparation for the sins of others. You ever wonder the difference between penance and reparation? Penance is for yourself. Reparation is for somebody else. Now, we don't even do penance for ourselves, let alone reparation for others. And Mary's telling us, you got to do penance for yourself. That's the message of Fatima and Lourdes. And reparation for others. That's the message of Fatima and Lourdes. And then Mary brings it together at Borang. Our Lady has repeatedly asked for sacrifice. And at Borang, she said to one of the children, offer sacrifice. During one of the apparitions at Lourdes, Bernadette turned toward the crowd and repeated Our Lady's request for penance, penance, penance. At Fatima, what did the angel say? Penance, penance, penance. At Fatima, Our Lady asked for sacrifice. At Borang, the last words of Our Lady were, do you love my son? Do you love me? Then sacrifice yourself. That's the whole meaning of the priesthood. And don't think you have to be a ministerial or ordained priest to do that. By virtue of your baptism, you are common. You share in the common priesthood of Christ, which means you too. Finally, last part, devotion to the Immaculate Heart. At Fatima, what did Our Lady say? God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. She asked that Russia be consecrated to her Immaculate Heart. She asked for the devotion of the first five Saturdays, which we're doing right now, in reparation to her Immaculate Heart. She asked, or she said that someday her Immaculate Heart would triumph. This was the message of Fatima. So then at Borang, it seemed that Our Lady was to remind the world once more of the importance of devotion to her Immaculate Heart. She did by showing now her Immaculate Heart turned to gold. So not only did she say who she was in Lourdes, then she revealed herself deeper at Fatima and says, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. But now at Borang, her heart turns to gold. You ever use that expression? She has a golden heart. He has a heart made of gold. Here's Our Lady showing amazing. The Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1944 was August 22nd. This is a huge day at Borang. So when Mary appeared, she was following the liturgical calendar. And at Borang, August 22nd, when Mary said, I am the Queen of Heaven, why? Because the Queen of Heaven was not on August 22nd back then. Now, there's a lot of condemnation of Vatican II. I just did a talk on it last week, was it? And you know, after Vatican II, the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Queenship of Mary were switched. 
The queenship of Mary was in June. The feast of the Immaculate Heart was August 22nd. They switched. Why? Because now Mary is on the Saturday after the Friday of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And now, August 22nd is the queenship of Mary because it completes the octave of the Assumption. And what happened when Mary was assumed into heaven? She was crowned queen of heaven. I'm reading this in total awe of the wisdom of God and the church. It makes perfect sense. So to match, this is what's awesome. Vatican II, the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Queenship were switched from June and August to match the hearts. So now the Sacred Heart goes with the Immaculate Heart and the connection of the Assumption with the Coronation in the same octave. Wow. And so finish our slide. Now we celebrate Our Lady of Borang on November 29th. Well, why then, Father? That was the date of her first apparition. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of Borang is Mary's promise, I will convert sinners. And at Borang, Mary did not look sad. She did not warn. She did not foretell calamities. She was merciful. She was the mother. She gave us the example of the family. She consoled us. She didn't give us the beat down that we deserve. I think that's why this devotion right now is so important. She simply made the promise, I will convert sinners. There were no conditions here. In a word which seems crushed, in our world, I should say, and in, in, that seems totally crushed under the burden of our own sins, what promise could be better? And that's why, I bet you didn't know this, so our last two slides, John Paul II, there he is at Borang. If it's good enough for John Paul, it's good enough for me. And I bet none of you, if you do, God bless you. But our last slide, there's the medal that you can wear around your neck of Our Lady of Borang. If your family's in trouble, if your children are estranged, if your family has fallen away from the faith, if your husband has left you, your wife has left you, your children won't talk to you, none of them are going to church, get the medal of Our Lady of Borang. Pray for the intercession of the fam, uh, her intercession for the family. Sorry, I went a little long, but this one is, well, you hear me say this just about every week, but that's the beauty of our faith. And so we are a Marian family. You want to talk about family? If Brother Mark could show, join our Marian family. micprayers.org. Maybe your family's having tough times. Maybe you need prayers for your family. That's what we do as Marian helpers. People write, Father, I'm a Marian helper. Now what do I do? You pray for other Marian helpers and they pray for you. It's multiplied. We intercede for each other. Every day I offer masses for you. You become part of our family through the Marian Helper. It doesn't cost anything. You, I don't care if you donate a dollar. If you can, that's beautiful. Thank you, because we, you know, we need the lights and the heat, but that doesn't matter. You can never donate a dollar. I will still pray for you the same. We are a family. M-I-C-Prayers.org. <clears throat> so visit, come, be part of our family. And so this is the message today. Praise be to God. Now, stay with us, because we're going to carry out now what Mary asked to do the first Saturdays. So we're going to take now the first Saturday's devotion, and we're going to unite together and pray. So I'm going to go down. Brother Mark is going to end this talk, and then he's, please join us. He's going to fire back up on the live stream for the first Saturday devotion. I'm going to go vest in the cope. We're going to expose the Blessed Sacrament. And we're going to make reparation to the wounded and immaculate heart of Mary, which is the entire message of what we just heard in Borang. So join us as we fulfill the request of Mary at Fatima originally to do the first Saturdays. And a big part of that was the request at Borang. God bless you and stay with us as Brother Mark powers down. 
We'll see you in a few minutes. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.